Hi everyone, this is Jim. Uh, before I get to uh, the content of this video, I wanted to mention that some uh, uh, news has been happening in the world of uh, Computer Go. And for the first time this past week, uh, a Computer Go program has uh, defeated a top-level uh, Go player, top-level human Go player. So it was a moment comparable to the, uh, the 1997 uh, match between Kasparov and Deep Blue, where, where Kasparov uh, lost that match. He had defeated Deep Blue earlier in 96 in a six-game match, but he lost the 97 match. So we're, we're in a moment comparable to one of those moments. Um, the, currently, the score is um, two to nothing in favor of uh, AlphaGo, a program from, uh, developed uh, by Google, against uh, Lee Sedol, who is uh, one of the top uh, Go players in the world, so uh, maybe even uh, the best. Uh, I don't know if they have an exact ranking system like, um, like chess. I can't say he's the world champion in Go, but he's certainly one of the top players. And uh, it's a five-game match, so we're in the middle of it. We don't know if he's going to be able to pull it out just yet, but certainly it's a real milestone that, uh, that a, uh, a computer program is capable of playing a competitive Go at the very highest level, so pretty interesting. Uh, anyway, the, this video I wanted to talk about Seki. So Seki is uh, a condition, uh, also uh, it's, it's a mutual life. Uh, it's a case where you have a group of stones that can't be killed because if you try to kill them, they will kill you. And so um, uh, both, uh, both uh, groups live. And there's an example of it here in, uh, in the bottom of this board. Notice there's two um, open spots, two liberties. That's characteristic of a lot of these uh, Seki positions. Um, and the problem is um, if black wants to kill this group, for example, if black plays here, white will play here and kill that whole group. So that's no good. Um, and uh, similarly, if black plays here, white will play there and kill the whole group. So black can't play in either of those stones. And so black cannot kill this white group, so it's going to live. Um, if it's white's turn to move, though, white uh, can't kill the black group. It, it takes two moves. White would have to play here and then here to kill that black group from the inside. Um, and wherever it plays, if uh, white plays here, for example, then black can play here, killing and capturing that group. And now white could try and conquer this group once again, but uh, now there's time for black to create a group with two eyes and that would be permanently alive and that would be um, Black's territory. So if we back up to this position again, this is an example of uh, mutual life. There's just no way to uh, for either side to kill those stones as long as they respond appropriately. So um, uh, something to watch out for. It, it uh, doesn't occur all that often, but sometimes it's an idea in games. Uh, Let's uh, back up, and uh, I wanted to show a position which is not um, not mutual life, but looks kind of similar. So let's see. Let's go back here to uh, this position. So uh, we'll create a group which only has uh, two stones in the middle. Let's see. Wastes waste some moves up here. And now in this position, if, um, if black wants to conquer this group, he can't. Uh, he plays here, white plays here, and, uh, and so black cannot uh, conquer that group. If it's uh, white's turn to move, however, white can win this. And the reason is that uh, it looks very similar to the, uh, the previous configuration, but there's one less stone here, and this matters uh, quite a bit. There's not going to be an opportunity for black to form two eyes. So white plays here. If black doesn't respond uh, at D1, then white will play at D1 and conquer this whole group. So black plays here to capture that group, and now white plays in the middle. And we'll see that uh, black no longer has the ability to form two eyes in this group. So that means that uh, it loses. If he plays away, then white will just uh, conquer this uh, group. So he has to play eventually in here. Um, and then uh, white just keeps playing back and uh, eventually captures that whole group. There's no way to avoid that. So um, the, uh, the position is really critical depending on how many stones there are uh, 
after you capture the group. So uh, let's see if we go to the end of this line. That was out here, you know, with uh, <clears throat> with three stones here and two liberties. This is a case of mutual life because black has enough room to form a group with two eyes after conquering that group if, if uh, white tries to expand. So white can't expand and uh, black can't conquer that group. So that's mutual life. Um, let's see, I wanted to show one more example of it. It's a more complicated example, let's see, uh, but maybe more typical of what you might see in a game all the way down here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so it's White's turn to move, and uh, let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Oh, no, I haven't gone out to the end. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, okay, and it's Black's turn to move. Um, so first of all, uh, let's, let's try and figure out what's going on. There's this group of stones here and this group of stones here, these two uh, U-shaped groups of black stones. These two groups together form uh, um, a setup with two eyes, so they can't be conquered. These are alive unconditionally. Uh, white can't play here or here to conquer those groups because uh, each of these two groups has two eyes. It's looking out on this eye and it's looking out on this eye. And both both groups look out on both eyes. Even so, even though it's two disconnected groups, those are those are permanently alive, and and white can't conquer them. Uh, it's the Seki situation involves these stones here. Um, so this group here of four black stones has one eye here and one liberty here, which does not look like an eye. But the problem is that white can't really play there. If white plays there, then black plays here and conquers that whole group. So that's, that's the catch. So this eye is kind of shared between the white group and the black group, and it gives... Uh, uh, hope to both of them. <laughs> it gives life to both of them. And um, and similarly, um, uh, black can't conquer that group. It, first of all, if it's, uh, let's back up one, if it's black's turn to move, uh, he can't play in this eye here because it is, um, it's just uh, surrounded, so that's not a legal move. Um, and if black tries to play at L12 here and conquer the white group, followed by a play over here, then white can conquer this group. And so this is an example of mutual life. So um, these positions are somewhat rare, but they, they do occur in games, and sometimes the, uh, uh, um, the, the possibility of these positions arising can affect the course of the play. So it is something to keep an eye out for in your own games. Uh, and uh, happens. it happens, as we saw in the first case, when uh, you, know, you have a group that's being invaded, you have to make sure that you have enough, uh, <laughs> that that invasion doesn't get uh, too strong and it, uh, you know, the invader can set up a mutual life type of situation. And sometimes it just has happens uh, you know, so seemingly randomly in, in uh, situations where two groups are trying to conquer each other and they, they, they reach this kind of standoff. Okay, that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Let's see if we can uh, get a game going. Okay, I'm going to play with this 3-3 um, three, three move again. You know, I'm starting to reach the conclusion that it's actually not, not very good. <laughs> oh, interesting, he answered with the 3-3. Three, three. Um, because I, I have lost a number of games where I just uh, ended up with two, not enough territory. Uh, but he's mirroring my moves, that's interesting. Okay, um, I've been playing a little bit off-center. Oh, he goes for the center point here and then building a, the framework like this if I'm allowed. So this has been uh, what I'm doing. So, um, you know, I'm going for territory over here, but um, at the same time, I'm giving up a large part of the board. So I have to uh, be able to invade later to justify this kind of play. Um, so what do I want to do here? He's coming towards this. I want to secure my territory, and then I want to make sure that his group doesn't grow too large. So see how he handles this. And uh, he, so he's invading over here on this side. So I want to advance on this side. So this is a roughly equal share. If I have this side and this side and he has this side and this side, then um, that's something <clears throat> that's about in balance. And um,
Okay, looks like he's going to try and conquer this stone. Do I want to try and live? Well, I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, so he's going to conquer both those stones now. Okay, so that was probably a wasted move. Example of where I should uh, pause to think a little bit. So he can capture those stones. I haven't, haven't made any effort to save them. But I am getting in the corner here, so that's a little something. He's getting the center. Let's not allow him to expand too much. And uh, let's place some stones here. So he's, he's uh, playing pretty aggressively here. Leaves some holes in his position, though, the way he's played this. So I'm going to try and cut here and um, extend this group and maybe connect up with these stones over here. Okay, so he decided to uh, take that stone. I was threatening to capture over here, to take those two stones. But this gives me time to connect uh, this group to these groups here, I think. So that was a, uh, an okay play for me, I hope. And then this group is looking a bit isolated now. It's cut off from these three stones here, and it doesn't have a lot of room to grow. So I may be able to actually win that, that group of four stones there. Um, but I haven't done anything to invade over here. So, so he's got a lot of territory over here that I need to reduce at some point. So um, let's see. He can't uh, capture here yet. So let's, let's go here. And just make sure I get these stones rounded up, and then maybe I'll invade over here. Uh, I don't want them coming in the corner. Okay, so now he is threatening to capture that group, so I have to uh, have to connect and. Um, I didn't want to particularly give up another stone over there, so I'm connecting this way. So how should I invade this area? Should, can I just place a stone out here? It's kind of far away from my forces and isolated, but it might force him to respond in some way. Yeah, you know, he seems to <laughs> keep making moves that I have to respond to. That's uh, one of the problems here that I have, learning when to respond and when not to respond, when to play away. That's another uh, term. I think it's called tanuki, when you can just play away. So let's try it here. Where, uh, where is the best place to come in? I have a cut point here. Maybe coming in over here, so I'm sort of not too far from that cut point, and um, see if I can uh, connect this way. There's a cut point here and a cut point here. Okay. Take that. So this group might die. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I played too. Uh, too boldly here in the center. I'm too far from the edge to really... Um... Yeah, he's just going to conquer this group, isn't he? <laughs> that was too easy for him. 
I, I didn't play that well. He just has to take this group. Oh, defend, okay. So that invasion didn't work. Um, yeah, that's that's what I need to learn is how to how to invade, and uh, when is it safe to invade? So he can take this group at any time, which means I can't kill this group of two stones over here. Though I can make some threats, so let's let's try that. Maybe it'll allow me to uh, get a little space here and live this way. Yeah, he's not going to let me live. He's <laughs> giving me a hard time. Uh, well, I guess uh, we can say I shouldn't have, have been allowed to live, so... Um, it's probably just just a good play from... Um, from the part of white. And uh, yeah, he's just securing his border here, so I can't um, break through in any way. Let's see, this group is all connected through to here. Um, let's go ahead and force him to make some captures here. Resolve that situation, and yeah, there's still still possibilities for missteps. Goes there, but I only have one eye is the problem. I need a, I need a second eye, and he's just taken it away. Okay, so I'm going to pass, and uh, we'll see what he does on the next move. He keeps going. Let's let's pass here and uh, count up, count it up. Let's see. Yeah, so these stones get removed, and these stones get removed. So I accept that. And white won by ten points. So it wasn't a huge uh, blowout. He had five and a half uh, points of Comey. That's the bonus that white gets for going second and uh, and an extra five points in, in territory or prisoners. Let's see, I had 56 territory and six prisoner. He had 45 territory but 22 prisoners because he captured all of these. Uh, the thing is, um, if I hadn't invaded, this didn't cost me all that much. Um, you know, I wouldn't. he wouldn't have gotten all those prisoners, but he wouldn't have placed all those stones. So the amount that I reduced his territory by is exactly equal to the number of stones that he played because he was matching me kind of stone for stone there. So I really had nothing to lose by trying that invasion, and uh, and it was an interesting try. Uh, just didn't work out. So uh, that's what I'm working on in my game these days: how to how to uh, do a successful invasion. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, see you next time. Bye.